Welcome to the first non-OWC recap on this channel. This is part one of the Circle Circuit series. If you haven't heard of it yet, check out my other video at the top. We start off with an early 1v1 tournament called Nyx Winter Cup, similar to Ya Summer Cup you might know or have even seen. As announced, I will create one big recap video per tournament instead of a weekly series like Osworld Cup to save myself some time, a lot of time actually. Also, the vids will only cover the semi-finals, finals and grand finals of each tourney as they are most relevant for the circuit points. Sorry for any inconveniences. Nyx Winter Cup had some top tournament players such as Bartek, Takito, Genshin Phobia, Ekoro and many more and they all dropped out in quarterfinals already. Gnahus, Bado, Mastia and Zaiden didn't make it to semis either but they will receive some circuit points as they made top 16. Finally we can start with the semi-finals, losers bracket 1. Out of Arnold, Intercamping, Matthew and Reedcat, only one makes it to the finals, you know the format. Due to some unlucky technical difficulties, Intercamping got a breakpoint and went up 3 to 1. Intercamping, by a stroke of unfortunate circumstances for Arnold, Going to be ending up winning this pick due to what looked like very blatant tech issues for Arnold. There's really nothing there to say besides so unlucky for Arnold on this first pick. This was followed by two super close picks that represented very well how neck and neck this match was. The fact is you don't get any pauses in these ending sections. Arnold really still snapping to these circles. A little bit jittery, but he's still hitting everything right now. The score lead's gonna be so close into the ending. We got the last couple of seconds here. Intercamping is gonna be able to pull it back into the last couple of jumps here. Is he? It's gonna be is so he? close into the ending. He might just barely have it. Is there a spinner at the ending? There's no, oh, there's, there's no spinner. Got... There's no he spinner. Doesn't he doesn't have... actually get it. It's less than seven. It's 708. Maybe slightly slow on the game, but that was one of the hardest patterns we've seen so far. Both players now dropping the act as we get into the heaviest flow aim section of the map now. Still on the double full combo, slightly higher accuracy for Arnold going into the ending, but it looks like it's going to come down to the wire as both of them still just holding onto the combo. Neither player giving an inch as we get right up to the ending of the pick. It's our first normal Ooh. point. 3 all, 4 all. now on to the ninth point of this tense match. It was intercamping once again getting to the crucial match point and putting pressure on Arnold. Lead is gonna do now wonders for intercamping as Arnold finding the drop near the end of the map here. Again! Still an 8th of the map, another drop here right for Arnold. As, yes, the accuracy actually dropping down as well. Another oh, chain miss no. for Arnold comes through on the burst and now the score going towards intercamping side at the very end of the map. It's just enough, it looks like, to pull the score back over to intercamping side here at the end of the map. He hits the back and forth, misses on the start of the stream right before it. Arnold576 was able to force the tiebreaker nonetheless, and he full combat double time too. I don't care what you say, it was an FC. <laughs> Competitive at the very least, Intercam being close to Arnold by a percent in Ack on something like like a Rose uh, is absolutely uh, still a very close map. It's dropping the Ack a little bit more so now near the end of the map. It looks like that miss doesn't matter regardless. Arnold just a beast on these speed picks and yeah, we are going yeah. to that custom tiebreaker. <laughs> the classic, <laughs> the classic. <laughs> Now this tiebreaker will decide were the unfortunate circumstances early at the alt pick crucial for this match. As if intercamping does not have that breakpoint and Arnold has it instead, it is 6-4 in Arnold's favor. But sometimes, unfortunately for Arnold, that's just how the cookie crumbles. And intercamping putting up a performance on the tiebreaker, regardless of any tech <laughs> troubles or breakpoints earlier on in the map, that I'm sure makes Reed Cat. Uh, so Intercamming will face the winner of Matthew vs. Reedcat for a top 6 spot. A Chilean matchup would really be interesting, but Reedcat will not let that happen so easily. On the very first speed burst map, it came down to the wire. Dropping accuracy, Mathy just on the break to drop it, he's gonna be pretty confident. He does drop combo again, but Reedcat's gonna have to FC the entire rest of the map to even make it close, and it's gonna be so <laughs> down to the wire, Mathy misses again! Oh my this god! This is gonna be a break point. Oh, he misses! Ah! What? Oh my god, Reedcat wins by 4,000 points! 
Sadly, this match didn't follow the pattern of this first pick. Actually, Reedcat managed to clean sweep Matthews 6-0 and moves on to top 8. Just like against Arnold, Intercamping had the better start against Reedcat, going up 3-1 as his act saved him during the double FC on double time 3. Coming to this last really hard part, Reedcat dropping act. loads of act, but Intercamping still holding and that's all that matters. I think that might be it. There's already such a big gap. Yeah, and I mean, to act. I, I two was... FCs. <laughs> okay. After decreasing the deficit, Recat started a huge run, winning one pick after another and nearly FCing the Noma to stream map for match point. Uh, <laughs> you're pushing. I, you're I, pushing I, the limits a bit too far with your commentator cursing. It's not that powerful. I was yeah. trying to make him. Oh, he misses oh. a jump. He misses a jump. I was trying to make him chain. I love jumps in my stream map. I was trying to make him chain miss, but instead of making him miss a jump, I think that's pretty fair. I'll take it. Uh, Raidcat closes it out with a incredibly solid score. The big 5-0 run just ended this match abruptly. Reedcat survives and advances to the finals, whereas Intercamming will be rewarded with top 8 circle circuit points. The next bracket is Europe against Canada with Krilla, Xuti, Pogacizi and Xylus. Xuti landed a nice equalizer against Pogacizi on the tricky Nomad 6 with a full combo. But the later 100 drops for Pogacizi bringing the score over to the Xuti Nader side now as she's found the accuracy and Pogacizi finds the combo drop. That is not what you're looking for. Five sixths of the way into the map, Xuti Nader basically guarantees the point of this. Look at this snapping from Zudi on these alt patterns. That's actually insane on a tablet. This was quickly responded by a no mod 1 win by Nash B against Xuti, which is almost unheard of. With about a fourth of the map, not even a fourth of the map, a one-eighth of the map remaining. I just don't think there's enough time for Zudi to come back on this unless CZ keeps missing. If he keeps missing over and over like this, maybe there's a chance, but it is 50k with just a sliver of map left. And uh, with the ending stream out of the way, that is going to be 2-1 to one for Pogger season. This matter seemed a bit like a match of little upsets as Xuti got the win on the speed double time 3. She went up 5-3 to three overall for a double match point. Point of the match here. Something you definitely wouldn't- oh god! Yeah! Long, long Both players. Yeah. Yep, this is uh, <laughs> this is the speed part of the map. In case you can't tell. In a desperate effort, CZ just saved himself on the ninth pick to stay in the tournament. One more to go for tiebreaker. Despite holding the score lead, had it on lock with that combo, but now it's back in Nesri's court once again. The ending to this map definitely making it a lot closer than it first seemed, but... Okay, doesn't look like any jitters at the... Oh my... Oh my... Oh, wait a second, CZ might be... The tiebreaker was denied by Xuti going the next step to face the winner of Silas vs Krilla. Silas was on the road meeting the Canadian colleague going up 3 to 1. It doesn't really matter when Silas is FCing this right now and what is going on. This is actually kind of insane from Silas here. Oh, well. Oh, okay. Well. <laughs> there, there we go. There it is. Yeah, very, very close to the full combo from Xylus. I don't know if that's the best play we've seen so far this weekend. Uh, I would have to look at some of the other matches that we've had so far. I don't think either Intercamping or Arnold full comboed this when we did see the both of them. Krilla answered with his own breakpoint on the quite similar hidden one pick. It is starting to get quite interesting with Krilla potentially equalizing right afterwards. During this build-up section, both players dropping the combo, however, saving Krilla's score lead going into the very last sliver of map. Yeah, this is going to be very close regardless of what happens. It's pretty much just going to come down to who misses more during this ending section. And no player misses because that makes sense, I guess.
But on that day, Xylus was a bit stronger on mechanics than Krilla. With a 3-0 run, he knocks the German out of the tournament for a Canadian duel fighting for top 6. It's the repeated breaks from Kriller after that that really make the difference. If he holds through that longer slider, if he holds through the slow section, he might have the chance to hold on to the score lead. But it looks like we're just going to get two break points right in a row here, Fiery, as Xylus, I think, surprising a lot of people with the consistency on the more difficult tech sections near the end of this map. Xuti and Xylus know each other very well, strengths and weaknesses, so breakpoints should be rare, right? Xuti couldn't repeat the FC on Nomad 6, still got a good score. However, Xylus outperformed her. I can like it so far, but Xylus right on her tail, so no room for breaks here. Really going to have to duplicate that performance from yesterday, and she's not going to! Xylus oh, now! No. Big combo lead here at the end, just needs to hold for, I think, a second longer, and this should be it. That is... It's over already, no density withstanding. Yep, that is... Before the match went out of her hand, the Xuti comeback was on, starting with a Hidden Hard Rock FC on Fremont. What a play in semi-finals level. With Hidden Hard Rock on this map is very good. Um, I don't... Uh, this map has been a very unpopular pick through the weekend, so uh, no other really solid plays on this come to mind. In fact, very few plays at all uh, come to mind on She's this map. I'm not sure if this is the first She's FC. picked either, but S is... She's uh, actually gonna FC. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that what? is the Hidden Hard Rock full combo. With each player having a pick left, a tiebreaker was near, but Xylus was not able to convert his own pick, giving Xuti the match point and later on the victory. Disappear. There's plenty of note density at the ending of this map. Veriquitous maps are known for having high end at the ending. It's closed more though. It's less than 30,000 score between the two players. Xylus was able to close half the gap here. The map is certainly not over yet. There's plenty of room for chain misses on these triples at the ending. Sudinator finds a slider break, but it's not enough. Xylus gets to top 8 light intercamping, while Xuti moves on to the finals. We will see her soon, but right now, Utami, Dragbit, Malichewski, and Morgan Stern are waiting in the winner's bracket. Overall, Dragbit vs Utami didn't have many clear-cut map wins, almost every pick could have gone either way. Dragbit was the one getting the head start with a 4-0 lead and a Tsuru Patan FC. This full combo into the last quarter of the map. Well, this is a difficult one here, and you know, you kind of see the fact that Utami might be proficient at these low AR hiddens, but Dragon's just putting up an absolutely insane performance in this match thus far. Even if Utami was able to put up the combos that he wants to right now, he's got to compete with whatever Dragbit puts up in the end, and as of right now, it's looking to be an FC. Utami came back and clutched a super important breakpoint for a 3-0 run on the Tech Nomad 4 map. We saw during the middle there. going to be pretty balanced between the two right now. Dragbit found a little bit of an accuracy drop in the section after the larger key eye there, so it actually is going to bring this rather close between the two. Tommy's still dropping alongside, but that earlier combo lead is going to give just a little bit of an advantage here. It's going to slowly whittle down based on the accuracy, but Ooh. it's not enough. However, this remained the last point for Utami as Dragbit won his own pick and broke another point for the huge seed upset win. Utami drops down to loser's bracket and will face Recat. With a hundred thousand score lead into this last section here, anything can happen. Dragbit, there's you know plenty of potential for chain missing at the ending here, but absolutely nothing from either player. Dragbit does miss the last note of that circular stream there, but it's a 120,000 score deficit that Utami's gonna have to make up, and I just don't think there's the note density at the ending here for it to happen, unfortunately. The match between Malichewski and Morgenstern was played super early into the semifinals week, so both didn't have much time to prepare. Still, both players won their own five picks confidently. And uh, it's going to be another... Uh... Or a much more dismissed than the previous map fair, actually. Much more dismissed than this goal. Oh, a coley bed gets messed up by the final little wiggle stream of the map, I believe. Yeah, the final one. Very good score, though. 800k.
on the normal 2 in semis here. A Colibat broke the 6th pick and proved why Skull V2 is still combo game, but much less than Skull V1 though. And I guess we're going to be seeing an act battle. Never mind, Bristol is gone. A Coley bed is going to be taking the first breakpoint of the match. Bristol got his breakpoint right back, but it was way too close for comfort. Man, these close one v ones are so fun. Close. The slight act lead combined with a very very small combo lead for Bristol gives him an advantage. Lead goes over to him. A Coley bed actually breaks again. I think Bristol is going to be taking a break point. Kind of bucking expectations here. Bristol performing really, really well in this Nomad 5. Wait! These were the only break points. They continued to win their own points until the tiebreaker happened. For Morgenstern, this was the third tiebreaker in a row already, winning against Mati and Takito. To the winner's bracket finals. Causing the upset here on the number one seeded player of the tournament. Finals next up. Only one of the four players, Malichewski, Xuti, Reedcat, and Utami, will make it to top three. You can never get the hidden hard rock out of Suti, so have an impressive run on Atama No Guard. Suti drops so many Oh hundred. god. That hurt to watch for the app. Slightly bigger than the from Malichewski. Big squares, but I don't, I don't miss them. Oh, Zudi holds! Malchevsky breaks! Opportunity for Zudi to get back, gonna take the lead very quickly. Oh yeah, my god. Over, and as long as she holds, she's in the clear. She's got a massive combo advantage. The act is completely irrelevant at this point, and it's a 100k lead, I think she's gonna miss the bag. Combo game. Soon after then, Malichevsky started to abuse the double time picks. As he was able to manage to win two breakpoints, his breathtaking performance on the DT map secured him match point. It might, it might be over already. Oh, I mean, yeah, now it's definitely <laughs> over. Yeah. Don't need to really think about it. Malichevsky does break, but they likely. They both the game? I hold up. <laughs> Map. A map, yeah, Zuni actually breaks again on the aim. Yeah, aim literally hardest section of the map, apparently. Even for players that are not speed players, that not really able to keep up on this AR the level of comfort necessary to compete with someone like Malajewski who is still FCing yeah. with 98. I mean, the map doesn't have that much of, you know, burst and stuff, but still hitting triples properly and just playing the map, being able to play these jumps well really shows... The level of comfort. It's almost hard to believe. Even through that ridiculous wiggle pattern earlier. Just like it's nothing. Oh yeah, let me just uh FC. Let me, uh, let me just uh let me just break out the FC. <laughs> Malajevsky FC's DT4. On another day, Xuti's score on Nomad 1 would have been easily enough for a map win, but Malachevsky was so poised to get to grand finals that he got the one miss SS score. I mean I I didn't think it would get more painful than Zudi losing to an SS, but it somehow did. Like, yeah. I don't know. It somehow got even worse with, like, I guess the, the carrot dangling in front with the Malachevsky actually missed, right? On the other side of the bracket, Riken and Utami were fighting for a top 4. Overall, this match seemed to be very strategic with few breakpoints. Reedcat probably wanted to start off more dominantly though. This really has to hold though, it is so close. I feel like there is a possibility that Utami can actually still snatch it back if he breaks. He's starting to get away though. It might just be enough at this point, yeah. He's got it. Reedcat gonna take a point on his own pick here to start off the match. But not, not how you want to win that at all. Utami was more like, let me FC Nomad 6 real quick. Who said it must be with Hayak? The map is difficult enough. Yeah, he's still comboing. He's still going hard. 
I'm pretty sure he's up. I mean, unless I've completely spaced out in like the first seconds of the map or something, I I think he's up seeing, isn't he? If not yak, this makes sense. Yeah. Oh, does it get tripped up by the stacked notes? So they both exchanged points until Recat was at match point, waiting for Utami to strike back for tiebreaker. And actually, Utami had a really good score, but Recat just FC'd for the first and final break. With these sorts of matches, is you know, you're in the longer stages at this point. You know, you have to take it with a a bit of salt. This is going to be a long match. Yeah. You know, you can't get discouraged every time. Oh, beautiful from both of them. That's what you want to see on this map. Absolutely smash it, and I'm fairly sure Reed Cat's got this now. I don't think there's anything that tricky at this stage. He does. Are you ready, Nauts? Because I'm not. Yeah, I'm really not, actually. Let's take the plunge. <laughs> Final, okay, final TI. Yeah. Any breaks. Any Utami is gone. It's gonna be the first break point of the match to finish it off. Reed Cat wins. This meant Bristol versus Reed Cat for top three, a match of tournament titans. But instead of seeing a punch by punch fight, it was Malichevsky winning the first four points. Reed Cat was really close to getting his own point on Norma three little bit in favor of Malashevsky because of the accuracy drop. He drops a miss though. That's gonna throw it, but Reed Cat finds another one here. It really is down to that 1% accuracy lead that Malashevsky has brought up on Reed Cat right now. I don't think there's any world where Reed Cat expected Malashevsky to be able to match this score if he's putting up 700k. But we come into the last pattern and he barely clinches it out. It's only accuracy. Bristol just looked unstoppable. I mean, how are you supposed to win against someone who FC's Hard Rock 2 in the finals? Showing once again why he was the number one seed out of qualifiers, saying, as you said, Chillier, that loss to Akali Bed last weekend in the semifinals was a fluke. He was having a bad week in his personal life, particularly, and I think that impacted the preparation pretty severely, very clearly. The preparation here this weekend okay. from Malashevsky, 99.1% okay. FC here. To stay in the tournament, Reed can needed six consecutive map wins. Not impossible, but very hard. He was absolutely poised to pull it off. It's a good recovery from Reed Cat, a relatively quick one, but Malashevsky close behind with the score now, and this combo might be enough to take it back if he's able it to is. hold through the map. It looks like it might actually be enough to secure the win here at the end. Any misses from Malashevsky, keep it on Reed Cat's side, Ooh. but it might not even be enough anyway. Reed Cat just barely holding on to the score lead. It's Four picks to go. Reed Cat tried his best, but the 800k S rank on the slider spam free mod one map was a bit too much, it seems. Ristol becomes at least top three. Malashevsky on this, oh, and there the goes Cat's combo. That might be it right there. There's not much harder than that space stream left in the remainder of this map here. And you mentioned Malashevsky with that full combo on Hard Rock 2. This map fairly similar in terms of the uh, patterning and these fast sliders. And he is looking to potentially put up another full combo here. He's got one more hard section before we get into this last bit here. And there's really not much to break on after that. He misreads. He went, he thought it was a reverse slider and he slider broke. It's not going to matter, is... though. It's 330,000 score in the lead for Malashevsky. Meanwhile, one match in the winner's bracket remained, a collie bat and drag bit battling it out. The start might remind you of the previous match as Morgenstern went up 4-0 with a near 900k score on point set here double time. See, but uh, Morgenstern is just kind of popping off on this map right now. There's uh, not much that you can do if you're drag bit when your opponent is still full comboing with 95, 96% act. And um, just kind of continuing to go off. None of the awkward aim patterns in this map giving Morgenstern. Oh, finally a miss on one of the stars. One of the snap aim patterns. That's, that's, the end, that's what you get for. That's what I get for talking. <laughs> Dragbit successfully started to defend himself a bit earlier with a first close breakpoint. It's not gonna matter, much, but hopefully. still, man. There is one more burst, so if Dragbit does full miss that and Morgan full hits it, 
this score lead can go very rapidly towards uh, Morgan, but it would be quite a disaster if that happened, and I'm really hoping it doesn't. Now that I said it, it's probably going to happen, isn't it? Oh my god, okay, thank you. This escalated into his own 4-0 run, including an impressive Tech FC equalizing the score. Break and drag bit now, and just uh, pretty much just continuing a rampage on this map. Not really much to say. Is he going to FC this with no mod? Is now the question of the day. I'm gonna say probably. It's looking like it. Oh. Oh. Nope, yep, that's what you get for saying anything. Slider break on the last. We have a rare case where the free mod rules are important. No mod on free mod nursed the score by 20%, and this was the deal breaker for the Atama pick. Be uh, the win for Morgenstern. Both of them hit the entire ending. Dragbit slider breaks on the very last slider. 639,000. 20% of 639,000 is about 128,000 score, which does take him below the mark for Morgenstern. Dragbit responded right afterwards with an astonishing run on Hard Rock 1 with some stellar accuracy. Oh man, that's so sad. Yeah, that's unlucky, but still 900k on this map. This is like 7.9 stars, mind you. 7.9 stars on a hard rock aim map, mind you. Something that's uh, pretty notoriously, I'd say, underweighted at high levels. Yeah, uh, after all the. Back and forth, back and forth until tiebreaker. It is another tiebreaker for Morgenstern, but will his winning streak continue? Back into this, and he's just not showing any signs of doing so! He is holding when it matters! the absolute most, and he is just not missing until it's too late. Dragbit and Morgan trade misses, and it's just not going to be enough. Morgan is your winner's bracket winner for the finals, and he's, what? As Dragbit drops down, it was time to face the Reaper of the loser's bracket, and Ristol seemed like to speedrun his way through finals. Another 6-0 run secured him a lot of match points. Let me point out not one, but two S-ranks in a grand finals match. Far more than enough to win this pick. Yeah, quite a dominating performance from him on this map. going to be a very early 3-0 lead for Malashevsky here. As we get into his next pick, S-rank from him. Typical maps where you would expect him to perform well. He has been simply outclassed by Malashevsky so far, and it does not give me a lot of hope for the remaining picks. This is such a dominant 5-0 performance so far in this match from Malashevsky. This is illegal. Yeah. This should, this should actually just be classified as a felony. He's going to S rank, dude. Dude, you One don't S rank an eight star map. <laughs> One slide of break on an eight star in tournament, by the way. But then Dragbit made a comeback statement. This rainbow dash play is absolutely not okay. Let's see. He does. He does. Oh my god. Hold on a second. Hold the phone. Stop the count. Stop the count. Don't stop the count. He's still going, man. He's still holding on to the reverse choke. The only miss he had is on those starting screens. Oh my god, he misses on absolutely nothing at the end. But it doesn't matter. Overall, especially Ristol's accuracy was top quality and it secured him a lot of points. He converted the second match point on duplication with a big accuracy win. Combat that act deficit of 5.5% that Malashevsky has built up throughout this map. This has just been from start to finish, aside from, what, Hidden 2 and Free Mod 2, a complete wipeout from Malashevsky. He has 
after that blunder matchup versus Morgenstern. Drag bit Sakur's third place and Malichewski is looking for a revenge against Akolibet, however he would need two wins for the tournament victory. This meant another relentless 4-0 start, again outmuscling Akolibet with his precise accuracy. A lot of this first round is likely going to be experimentation for Morgenstern with the picks, just to see what kind of direction actually ends up working the most for him in this match. Yeah, this number one six seems to be working out a little bit better in the second half for him here. And honestly, the thing that's going to lose him this map is going to be the accuracy difference between the yeah. two there. The combo was absolutely massive at the ending and, you know, basically almost doubled. Uh, oh, let's go. It's looking a little doomed for Morgenstern on this map, though. Malashevsky 460k, near 98 accuracy. Not quite as good of a score as yesterday, but you don't really need that. You just need to outscore your opponent. Uh, and that is what is happening right now. Oh, goodness. This is just... So, so recoverable for Morgenstern, honestly. If you've looked at even these past two maps right here, the score gaps are significant in terms of what you would consider reasonable. But, I mean, it's it's chain misses. Morgenstern seemed a bit more comfortable on speed, so our 560k score on Nomad 5 was a start to come back into this match. It's been fairly in favor of Malashevsky up to this point, but... You know, not only does this pick provide a little bit of a confidence booster for Morganstern, even this really is something that, you know, you have to wonder how many avenues this is really going to open. How many speed picks are left in the pool? Because, you know, we know Malashevsky is confident on stamina, so it really must be the speed aspect of this. The neutral viewer would have wished a lot more points like Hidden 2 Tech. Super hard map, close outcome. And Malashevsky with uh, a tighter difference than existed at the beginning of the map is going to end up taking the win on this pick. He's going to have a little bit worse of a score than he had yesterday. He was sitting at about 235,000 on the score yesterday. Uh, regardless, actually, something to note is he still would have beaten Dragbit yesterday with this score too. So a very consistent performance, rather, from Malashevsky, regardless of whether or not he drops less than yesterday. Really I mean, you can't complain about Ristol playing so well, right? Morgenstern won't be defeated so easily, though, showing his proficiency on aim and pattern picks. At the ending here, as we approach the last couple of seconds, we're going to go back to kind of that beginning of the map style here. Just some one-thirds in the sliders. Time has run out and a 600,000 plus score for Morgenstern on a very difficult hit in one map is going to be giving him his second point on the board right now. Hold on, Malashevsky can't hold the combo. He's going to potentially get his third point on the board right now. He hits the stream. He's got a massive combo lead now and the misses from Malashevsky are just going to further push the score in his favor. Morgenstern is going to get his third point on the board with two in a row into the last couple patterns here. There's really not much that Malashevsky is going to be able to do about this. The last couple square jumps is more Morgenstern hits them and that is it! Akolibad was not able to get another breakpoint to continue the comeback and the bracket was reset. Winner of the coming match wins the NWC trophy. Malicheski straight up started with the air 8 hidden map. It was predictable that this was his point, but did you really need to FC it? <laughs> That's going to be a recurring theme through this entire match here. Malashevsky is going to put up an absolutely stupid score this? well past 800k at the ending here. What is occurring on my screen right now? He's going to pass 900k. He's actually he just gonna, he's going for it. He's actually just going to send you... it home. Okay, well, all right, I'm quitting. Bye. Have Me when I full combo the seven-star AR8 hidden map in grand finals of a 1v1. Morgenstern won Nomad 5 last time, so he picked it right after. Another comfortable for a Colibet, right? break earlier in between that halfway and two-thirds mark for Morgenstern just not allowing him to claw back the lead but these continued breaks from Malashevsky might make it possible to miss from Morgenstern right at the very Ooh. end as well and it's slight combo lead for Malashevsky right before the ending spinner this is just one long spinner right at the end of the map and that ending miss from Morgenstern actually gets rid of any Light chance he had at winning the map. If you don't succeed, try again. Akolibet picked Hidden 2, which was highly contested last time for a desperation point, but Ristol even improved his score. His favor during this part of the map, as now Morgenstern just unfortunately doesn't have the combo going into the ending section of this map with that earlier slider break to try and claw anything back. It's so It looks so close for Morgenstern every time, but just ever so slightly longer, Malashevsky holds on to the combo. Ever so slightly better, we see Malashevsky take the act lead. 
The possibly most impressive showing was the 6-0 by Malichewski landing a 1-miss score on a Koro Nomad 6. This finger control map is just a nightmare to play. Quite a break, I think. Uh, just a little bit mentally drained after that point with, with how the rest of this match has gone and unfortunately not going to be able to pull out any sort of consistent combo or accuracy on the back half of that map. Meanwhile, Malashevsky, like you said, breaking 500,000 on that pick in match. It's not okay. One better miss. better accuracy than Ikoro's replay. On At this point, the resistance of Morgenstern was broken. The only blowout of finals and grand finals happened on bracket reset. What a dominant showing by Malashevsky. ...that he set for himself all throughout 2021 uh, and through the start of this tournament. Coming out of qualifiers as the first seed dropping single digit maps until he met up with Morgan Stern in the <laughs> winner's semifinals and just suspiciously good play from Malashevsky all throughout this match. What does this mean for circle circuit points? As this was a 1v1 tournament, the points don't need to be divided within a team. 30% of the 6,400 directly go to Malachevsky and Malachevsky only. All the other points distributions can be seen here. Congrats, everyone. Also, this is the current league table that will be updated after each tournament. As team tournaments are going to be included, I will probably make a cut after the top 20. That is it. Thanks, Nick, for hosting this tourney and providing me with an early match VOD. As test tournament is not happening this year, probably the perennial seems to be the next tourney in the circuit. Meanwhile, you might see some piano bits in your subs, but don't mind me.